Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland. In this episode, we will be testing the new cold fusion seat from the guys at Eau Rouge. Sporting four cooling fans distributing air along some innovative looking 3D air gap layers inside the cushions and mounted to a properly stiff 5 mm thick fiberglass shell, it looks like it should raise the driving comfort level by a fair amount. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Let's take a closer look at this Eau Rouge Cold Fusion seat. Out of the box, it's in great condition. It came well packed. It had several layers of protection on the seat itself and it was in a box just filled with bubble wrap. So they did a good job with the shipping. The dimensions of the seat, let's go over some of the specs here. First, the weight of this seat comes in at 20 pounds and nine ounces or I believe that's 9.32 kilos for everyone else in the world. So not that heavy of a seat, considering that we have some fans and some electronics mounted to this seat. Now, as far as the depth and the width, they have the numbers on their website for that, but I'm gonna go ahead and, the important one for me is down in here, in this section, right? Where you're smaller, your back is gonna be in here, and your butt's gonna be sitting down there. So that tells me a lot when I know what that width is. And it's going to be a little bit wide for my personal preferences. And also, just to mention, I don't see any other seat sizes available on their site. Now, this they do have two different styles. This is what they call the C1. And the C2 has that big wraparound helmet protector bend stuff on it. So that's actually going to be a little heavier, too, because there's more to it. But personally, I prefer these, especially for sim racing, because you know, getting in and out of the cockpit with that thing on, unless I'm really needed for my helmet and I'm going racing, then, yeah, I'd rather not have it. All right, so let's see what we've got on millimeters. We'll go with that first. And that comes in at about 300, I'm going with 345 millimeters. And that's down here in the, in the deep part here, point to point. So that would come out to about, let's see, what is that, 340, about 13 and a half inches or so. And coming back out here to the front, we're looking about 530 millimeters or just under 21 inches. On the front flare here, this should be wider obviously than back there and it is, I'm sure. This comes in at about 400 millimeters. Maybe, eh, not quite 400, more like 385, 390, somewhere in there. And that's the exit point of these bolsters. The height on the back here, this is a pretty tall seat, so I think most people are probably going to be able to fit in this without too many problems. Let's see, about three, no, 875 millimeters, maybe 880, which comes out to be about 34 and a quarter, 34 and a half inches. So a lot of height on that. Another important measurement up here in the shoulders, and I'm going to leave these bolsters in when I measure this because I know I am not going to be taking them out. And it looks to be about 420, 430, depending on how you're measuring it. This is not the most accurate thing in the world, obviously. Right, so I'll say about 430, and that puts us about 17 inches. Now, these are removable, and they've done this correctly. They've got the hard plastic part of the hook loop on this side so that it stays smooth over here. There is no Velcro here. The fabric is the other part of the hook loop. So they've done that right, I think. Go ahead and put that back in because I'm going to be leaving these in, I'm sure. I might even be rearranging them a little bit. All right, so the bolts on the side here, the seat bolts or seat bracket bolts, these are industry standard 290 millimeter center spacings. So that's good. Again, this is a real racing seat model. It's been modeled after one. The shell itself is a five millimeter thick fiberglass shell. I'm sure this is custom made for Eau Rouge when they ordered these, they had to have a back flat, and we'll talk about that in a second here, but it's a very stiff shell. I went up here on this part here where I can usually get some movement. I'm getting just a little bit. And of course, I should be able to get more up here because I get more leverage. And there's, it just feels very stiff. Yeah, they did a good job as far as that's concerned. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the rest of the shell here while we're talking about it. The seat belts for the waist and the seat belt holes up here for the shoulder harness, very nice fit, tight, everything looks good. Again, fit and finish is very good here. And on the back, you can see, I'm gonna show you guys this. 
it's kind of a, see how flat this is? And that's done on purpose, obviously. Other racing seats, and I've had a few of them through here. Prisma, my bar coat that's right behind me here, they all have a bit of a curve or radius to them back here on the back. And that's obviously because of the way the back works. Now this one, obviously, we want a flat so that we can have our fans mounted here. And that's where the fans are mounted, as you can see. And we got one down here. So it's definitely flatter through here. Finish is very good on this. I don't see any scratches or scrapes anywhere. Let's go ahead and keep going around here. And let's talk about the material that the seat is made of. It's got some pretty good foam in it. It's a little bit, you know, it's not race car foam because that's really dense stuff, right? Because you don't want to move much. You don't want your body moving much if you get into an accident or you're getting a crash. You just want it, you know, little, enough foam in here or padding in here to make it comfortable for you. But yeah, you don't want it to compress a lot because that means your body's going to move more than it needs to before it gets stopped. So it's better to be cinched in really tight and have a tight seat or a seat insert where a lot of guys use to get that super tight fit. But for our purposes, sim racing, yeah, good to go. No problem there. And it's cushy. It feels like it's going to be comfortable. Of course, we don't know for sure until we actually get into the seat. The material on the side bolsters up here, everywhere, except here on this back panel and the seat panel itself is this, let me go ahead and take this off. Give you a little closer look at it here. This material is very smooth. I think they call it some kind of a velvet or something. But yeah, it's just very smooth and cushy feeling. Feels like it can be very comfortable. But again, this kind of material usually isn't that breathable and that's why they're using what they use here. The good profile on the thigh bolster here, I'm just kind of calling it that, or thigh rest. So this is the, where it goes into the back of the seat and the front we have bigger section, which it should be. So I don't know how the comfort's gonna be until I get there. This here, I can't take this pad out but it is a three, they call it a 3D material underneath here. And then that has this, I think they're calling it a cold fusion or something, some kind of material that when you move air across it, it feels cooler than obviously something like this thick stuff, right? So that's the whole idea. The idea behind this seat, by the way, is not having airflow as far as feeling the air blowing on your back. That's not what's going to happen here. This is going to fill up with colder air from the ambient air outside against your already hot, sweaty back. <laughs> and that's going to feel like something, you know, somebody put an ice sheet in there. Not maybe ice sheet, but it's something, a cool sheet in between your back and the seat all of a sudden. That's what it's going to feel like. And of course, we've actually got one under here, which I'm looking forward to because I usually get very hot back here in the seat. Even though I'm using fans on my cockpit, they can only blow on the front of me. They can't do anything for the back, right? And it, even when, you, and when you're wearing a harness, it makes it even hotter because now we've got these harnesses strapped on. So any way you can get cooler is always a good idea as far as I'm concerned. So again, I'm going to give you a close-up of this mesh in my close-up camera so you guys can see the difference there. Yeah, it's very breathable. How breathable is it? Let's try something here. Let me get my flashlight. Put that there it is. All right. Take a look here in our close-up camera, these fans. And the fans, how big are these fans? Look to be about three inch, two and a half inch. What do we got? They are about 75 millimeters this way, which will put them about, yeah, I'd say a three inch fan in here. And it's a multi-bladed. I don't know how well you're going to see that in the close-ups here. Over here, you might see it better. But they're multi-bladed. It's not like they have big fat blades. Kind of like them almost look like a little turbine in there. I'm going to put my flashlight up here. Maybe we can illustrate what's going on here. Let's try this one over there. There we go. You can see the fins on the blades there. You can also see that, yeah, this is very airy in here. So it's going to be easy for these fans to suck in some colder air and saturate the back part of this material so that it feels much cooler. Let's see this one over here. It's not in the right angle probably for our camera. But yeah, same thing over there. Yeah. I can't wait to actually use this because I've always, like I said, always get sweaty in the back and I always thought somebody's going to make a seat <laughs> with some fans in it. But, you know, I've seen actually guys mod have cut holes in and put like computer fans on the back of their seat. So, you know, hey, if it works, it works, right? Now, 
let's really talk about the how many fans we have on here. First, obviously, we were just on the back. We saw we had three fans there, right? We got two across the shoulders. We got one in here in the smaller of our back. And then we'll go ahead and turn this, just kind of lay this over. so We can see what's going on. Let me lay it the other way. And we can see the switch, too, at the same time. There is a switch. Another cool thing about this, and I'm glad to see it when I got it, there is no software <laughs> that runs this seat. It's just a switch that you control your seat with. And I'll get a close up there of the seat. And there's the switch on the bottom. You can see on the bottom there is a DC power supply connector. And they give you a little wall wart, as we call them, DC power supply. And of course, this is going to plug into that, and then you plug this into an outlet. It's pretty long. It's about, I would say, five feet long as far as the cord. I don't know if that's going to be long enough for me, but I do have extensions for these, and I'll give you a close-up look at this. It's a normal DC plug that we put a plug in just about anything. And I'll go ahead and let you see what the power supply is. 12 volts at a little less than half of an amp as far as the power is going to pull. Not much else to see there. It's just, it is what it is here, just a little wall wart. And the switch on here, and I'll show you some B-roll of that, me turning it, is a, a notch switch. As you turn it, you can feel the notches in it. So you can easily tell, you know, if you're on click number one, two, three, four, five, how many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. All right, so there's six notches. It has a nice little knurly section on the knob itself, so it's easy to grip, even with a glove or a sweaty hand. 3D printed it enclosure, it looks to be. And of course, we have some wires running out. Let's give you a close up camera here. You can see we have wires coming out of this, obviously, so that we control the fans. And that goes down. I'll show you some B roll of where these connections come down. And on the bottom here, we have this power distribution board that's taking the power in, obviously, from over here and sending it off to where it needs to go to the other fans. And it's probably some kind of a controller in here, too, I would imagine. Pretty simple, really, when you think about it. And we've got a fan on the bottom that's going to blow right where we need it to blow. <laughs> right up our sweaty crack, right? So, yeah. I kind of like the configuration of this. I really don't have anything, you know, out of the box to say bad about it. I mean, obviously, we're a long ways away from seeing how it performs. Oh, there is one thing. This piece here that is usually for our, our six-point or five-point harness, the anti-submarine part of our harness system. And that actually is loose. It moves in here. I'll give you another B-roll shot of that. So, and that's typical of these seats. And the reason it's moving like that is because they're using the exact same one they use up here, right? So, and back there on the shoulder. But this is not in any kind of foam. It's just on the, basically, it's very thin material and it's fiberglass. So that's why it moves back and forth like that. Now, I would like to see that, you know, at least they could glue it on or something or come up with a spacer or something like that to keep it from moving. But is it going to make any noise? No, it's not going to make any noise. Is it really going to cause any problems with anything? No, it won't. But again, it's just one of those things that you'd like to see improved upon, right? Because everything else is pretty good here as far as the wiring's nice. You know, everything is shielded. It looks like it should look. And of course, we have our little spring down here, a little cable that holds the Seat, this part of the seat piece is on. Now, I'm trying to see if there's any way I can show you guys this. And I, I can't do it, I don't think, because what they've done is, let me turn this around here, is they've, I can pull this back this far, but the fan is in some kind of a, and I can feel it under there just a little bit, is under some kind of a, or attached to some kind of a funnel. And you can feel the indentation in here of that funnel part of it. Now, I haven't sat in it yet, so I'm not sure what the comfort is going to be in this, but each one of these, if you roll your, your hand around this, you can feel it. There's a perimeter here or an indentation, and we have one up here too and over here too. So this, these little, I'm guessing it's some kind of a 3D printed type of interface that the fans will go into, and as the fan blows, it's beveled. You can feel the bevel around it so that it disperses the air better. It's like a, an airflow direction duct, if you will. All right, anything else we want to talk about? I guess that's it. I mean, it's just a seat at the end of the day, right? But we've got fans in it. 
So what we're going to do now is go ahead and I've got some Sparco side mount seat brackets that I'm going to put on here. And again, the bolts on here match the pattern. So no big deal there. It's just, and they do come with, by the way, these bolts, which is kind of nice. They don't make you source your own bolts. And these are M8s. Look to be about 30 millimeters long. The big washer on it. But we don't have to worry about sourcing our bolts. Very nice. Even though I have plenty of them. All right. So when we come back, what I'm going to do is have this. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and mount it. And, you know, because all I'm going to do is put a couple of seat brackets on the side and then go over to the rig over here and obviously bolt it down. When we come back, we'll see how all that went. So here's the result of the mounting procedure. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff, really. Just put some side mount seat brackets on here. I used a set of extra Sparkos that I have laying around, and they have four holes and four slots on each side. That would be the minimum I would suggest if you get a side mount seat bracket. Of course, it does not have to be Sparco. You can get the eBay ones if it's a decent steel. You don't want something that flexes, obviously. But the only thing you have to pay attention to when you're putting the right side bracket on is the cables underneath here that come out of the housing. Now, as they exit this housing, obviously, they were smart enough to know that they're going to need some room behind there for the bracket to fit, and it will fit. But the cables were kind of tight. So when you first put them in, you have to be careful not to pinch the cables. I just kind of pulled out on them a little bit like this, and that gave me plenty of room to get the bracket underneath. And then you can just push them back up and feed them back into the seat so that they're out of the way and not getting hung up on anything. The DC power supply plug is installed and it is running down to my power strip over there. Plenty of room for that. Now if I start doing some zip ties on this cable and do some proper cable management to it, I was thinking that it's still a reach but it might be close but it depends you know how far away your power strip is so there is a possibility that you might have to get an extension for this but you know they're pretty cheap and it's good to do that instead of stretching the wire. So everything works well. I tested it. I put the power on and I'll give you a b-roll of me operating the switch. The switch itself, the face is blue and then it has a red indicator that will tell you which power setting you are on as you turn it up and turn it down. Pretty simple. It's a good tactile feel to the clicks there so you know which one you're in. But typically I think I'll probably be running at full force because I get pretty hot in the seat. Especially if you're running harnesses and things like that. But if you're not, you probably won't get quite as hot. Anything else we can talk about here? The seat angle. I do have it in the third from the top on the back slot. I have it on the top hole in the front. I could make it go a little bit more as far as the angle on the seat. But I really don't know yet until I'm in and driving the seat to figure out what's comfortable and what's not. And we'll talk about more of that once I do get into the seat. And we'll go ahead and roll around this way. Another thing, you want to make sure your fans are going to be clear of any obstacles, including underneath when you mount this, because you want them to be able to grab air and not have to have a confined space to pull that air in. The seat is straight. That's another thing I like to point out. Some people might not think that's important, but yeah. I've had seats before that the mounting holes need to be exactly parallel to each other from left to right side. If they're not, then your seat will mount in a canted angle. So to be actually sitting off at an angle one way or another, if they're not exactly parallel to each other, the pairs of holes in, your, in the bolt holes, they can still be 290 millimeters on the centers like these guys are. But if they're not parallel across the seat, then yeah, you're going to have a little bit of a canting problem. I had that happen to one seat a while back, so I just always check that on seats now when I'm mounting them, make sure that they are straight and parallel, and this one is. No worries. I have sat in the seat. It doesn't fit me like my Sparco does, but I didn't expect to at over 14 inches in the back. But again, this has to be kind of a universal seat. I don't really want to call it that because they actually told me that they're planning on coming out with a large version of the seat later on for the big heavy guys, the big Bubba seat. <laughs> All right, so really the only thing left to do is get in and drive it and see how it performs. Now, they say in the instructions that you should leave it off for the first 30 minutes and then turn the seat on. And I know why they're doing that, so you can get good and hot and sweaty in your back there 
and then you turn it on, it feels like somebody put an ice pack, I'm sure, <laughs> underneath your seat and on the back of the seat, something like that. But I think that you could probably notice the difference sooner than that, but we'll follow the instructions for now. But on the other hand, if I had the seat and I was using it all the time, I'd just turn it on when I get in, just so I would stay you know, cool the whole time. But it is a good way to contrast the differences between not having it and having it, I would imagine, after 30 minutes. So we're just gonna get in and do some driving, and then turn the seat on and see what I think. Now I can sit in this seat all day long and tell you guys how much cooler it feels when you turn the fans on. But that doesn't really do much for you as far as real information. And it's hard to convey on video and it's not tangible, something that you can feel. So I thought I'd get a little more scientific and take some temperature readings on the seat with the fans going with this guy here. And this is a master cool infrared thermometer. Of course it's infrared obviously and we have a little laser pointer down there in the bottom of that little hole. So when you point at something, you can shoot the laser on it and it tells you what area you're actually taking the temperature from. And it, it is in Celsius or in Fahrenheit. So we'll use this little gadget to see if we can see any differences. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is go down here and turn the fans on. And you're gonna hear them in the background. Now they don't sound quite as loud when you're sitting in it and when you're not, because you can see we got that little blue glow going there. And as soon as I turn it, the red pieces will come in. So we'll go ahead and turn it all the way up. So that's maximum. And you can probably hear the fans in the background, I would imagine. So let me go ahead and activate this by pulling the trigger once. Okay, so now it's activated. It should be able to take the temperatures we need. I thought I would do the hot spots first, which would be the regular material that the seat has on it and just take some readings and get a general idea of what it's gonna be. All right, so let's look here. We'll do Fahrenheit first, then I'll show you guys Celsius. All right, so you can see my little pointer there. So that's 76.1, 24.5. Let's go down here and see if it gets any colder. Yep, a little bit, 75.9. I'm gonna keep pulling the trigger, 24.4, to see if it changes. That's about the same. Go to my little shoulder piece here. It might be, actually be colder over here. Yep, 75.2. But as we get lower in my room here, it's air conditioned right now, it's going to get colder anyway, so you have to keep that in mind. So we'll go back up here and try to see if this is still staying consistent. Yeah, 75.6. And then we'll go down to the thigh support down here underneath your thigh and see what that material is reading. It should be a little cooler because it's lower. Well, it doesn't look like it, does it? 75.6. I'm taking several readings. I'm going to keep pulling the trigger here. You see my whole thing flashing on and off. And that's 24.3 Celsius. Now we'll go up to the shoulder fans, or what I'm calling the shoulder fans, the double fans that are on the top here, and see what we can get on those. I'm gonna take several readings to try to get the coldest one. There's 72.1 right there. 72.1, which is 22.3 in Celsius. Go over here and see what this guy's doing. And that's 72.6. It's a little warmer over here. I'm taking several readings, see if it changes any. 72.6, let's see if it's still 72.1 over here. 72.4 over here now. So that's to be expected. I mean, these temperatures are gonna be fluxing or back and forth a little bit on the points. All right, let's go down to the lower one. So we're already like three degrees or more colder. So let's go down here to the bottom one. That should be colder, I would imagine. Yeah, 71.3 down here. I'll take several readings. Yep, 71.3, it's 21.8 in Celsius. Yep, still staying constant. And we'll go down here. And this one probably is gonna be very close to that because we're so close to where the fan's blowing here and here on both sides, the back and the bottom. Let's go ahead and shoot that one. Yeah, 71.3, well, actually, 71.9, so it's a little bit cooler. Makes sense, right? We're pulling off lower, colder air down here. And that's right on the fan, away from the fan, it's still 70, wow, even away from the fan. So you can see how this, this pattern that they're using here with this fan, the plastic pieces, whatever they're using under here to distribute the air, kind of a funnel-shaped thing, but very flat, I'm sure. So that's, I'm taking readings here, that's 70.7. That's not even where the fan is. I, think, I thought the fan was back here somewhere. 
Okay, so 70.7, 21.5, just about everywhere I'm shooting it. Over here we were at 70, now it's 77 here. No, well, that's not right. <laughs> Try that again. 77.3 here. There must be a breeze over here. Because I do have my air conditioning on. I probably should do this without my air conditioning on. It's blowing around in here. So, yeah, you can see that just by those temperature readings there, we're getting some different flow of air around here. So, yeah. 76.1 now. 75.9. So that's, it wasn't 77 then, definitely. 76 maybe. Okay. Which is 24 and a half. Versus back in here. 70.3 so that's almost a six degree difference 21.3 celsius so i think that pretty much proves to anyone who believes in science these days which doesn't seem many people do <laughs> that yeah it's definitely doing the job that a rouge says it will do now that's a lot of degrees difference between a hot back and this feeling against your back and because of the way these things are formed like I just show you showed you with this that it's cool everywhere in here and it's cool everywhere on that back panel there's no like little cold spots that you would think I first thought what I would be feeling but they have this material and they call it their fusion material I'm not sure what it is but any kind of air movement over it it gets colder than most things do or gives you the sensation of being cooler and it certainly does do the job. It works, you know, there's no doubt in my mind. When I first saw the seat and they wanted to send it to me, I thought it was pretty gimmicky, that it wouldn't work. But, you know, this is turning out to be something that I'm starting to really appreciate, actually. First, we'll take a look at the fans that are installed in the seat. And I've removed the cover off the shoulder fans. This is what the cover looks like. It has a honeycomb design to it. And we have four screws that actually go into the housings, not the seat itself, but the housings have screw holes in them. We got four screw holes on each one and the fans are turning in a counterclockwise direction like that. So it pushes the air against the cushion behind this or the material behind this. So now what we'll do is go around the front and take a look at it from the other side. Let me pull this cushion back away from the back of the seat here. There's Velcro back here that grabs the cushion, plus the weight of your body will keep the cushion in there. So, and you can't really pull it all the way out. I, I suppose you could once you detach everything, but I'm not gonna go that far. And you can see both of the fans here. And you can see we have this thick foam here that goes up against the back of the seat. Now I have put some heat on this. This is all glued together, this cushion. The, the fabric on the front wraps around the back and it's glued together. We have some what we call in the postry business, hog rings. And that's just a ring that we pinch down. It's sharp on both sides. And you can see how it's got a folded corner in here. Very nice, tidy job, actually. So I put a little heat on this. Very careful because you obviously don't want to burn anything. You don't want to get the foam hot. A little bit of experience with this. You have to be very patient to get this to work. But I've done this before with a poster. I've done a postery work. So I know how to get in here. Now there's the foam. Just want to show you the layers here. Now this is their own proprietary, I believe, material. I'm not sure if they have somebody make this for them, they make it themselves. But you can see it's got a honeycomb pattern on one side and it has a sandwich of these very fine threads in between it. And they're stiff threads. In other words, I can pinch this and it doesn't want to compress very much. So that gives you this air gap that allows the heat transfer to take place. So we have that cool breeze coming in and because of the way these housings are around the fans on the front here, it just distributes it quite evenly as we saw if you saw already the temperature test I did on this you can feel it all it feels like the whole panel at once is getting cool and now I'm seeing how they can do that because soon as the air starts moving you can see with this air gap in here it can spread all the way down to the bottom very quickly so you feel the coolness and then we have another layer of foam here that has I don't know, some kind of a maybe this is a cold fusion coating or something but yes it looks like a coating on the foam of course it's perforated that we're actually contacting our back through this thin material here that was porous. So anyway, there's the layers, and I'll be having to get my 
glue, poster glue back out, and I'll glue this back down nice and tight, rather, and secure so that it looks like nobody ever went in there. So the fans are replaceable, it looks like. You are going to have to have a little bit of experience, I would say, to do this, or at least a lot of patience to be able to replace one of these fans. If not, you could take the cushion out, I'm sure, and send it back to the manufacturer, and they'll replace it for you. All right, so put this back where it belongs and move on to the next segment. Harness compatibility. So we've got wires and cables in this seat where we normally don't have any. Now, of course, the harness ports up here for the shoulder harnesses and the ones over on the side here for the waist. Yeah, there's no issues there with cabling. You can see because if you saw in the closer look, the cabling is actually running on the side of the seat over here and underneath towards the front. My only concern was because the cables come up into the anti-submarine harness access port, will these belts be pinching them? Happy to see the way they did this, it won't. I'm going to pull this cushion back a little bit. You see how these cables are coming in from the side of the seat over here, and they're coming that direction. They go that direction underneath the front. So when you have your anti-submarine harness, now this is a 6.1, so they have two straps down here. You can see that they'll be pulling up this way when I'm being pushed into the seat by my surge element. Then they're not going to be, they're going to be pulling back this way, right? on this hole here. They're not going to be pulling this way. So the cables can sit here and not interfere with anything and you shouldn't have any issues. So again, I just want to show that for those of you who do run harness systems or have motion systems that you run them on. Yeah, this is going to be fine. I don't see, because they don't move anyway. These are attached to some holes or where am I? There they are. <laughs> These eye bolts is where they're attached to. And yeah, they don't move anyway. So in other words, they're not going to be moving up and down through this hole and rubbing against the cables over there. They're just stationary anyway. But I did want to make sure there was enough clearance so that I wasn't riding on top of a cable, and that would not be good because it would pinch it between this whole perimeter here. That would not be good. All right, so it looks like we're good to go as far as running our harness. Again, I just want to show you guys that. We're in iRacing at Sebring in the Ferrari 488 GT3 Legacy car. So let's talk about the stiffness of this seat, which is an important factor, I think, in a seat. A lot of these cockpit seats that come with a cockpit set are not very stiff. They're thin shells, they look like a race car seat, but boy, they flex. And I think I've shown that in some cockpit reviews over the years that I've done. This seat is anything but flexy. It's a five millimeter thick shell, and it's every bit as stiff as my Sparco Evo seat, which is an FIA certified seat. I know why they did this, went with the stiffness, because if you're going to be cutting holes in it and putting fans in it, you want something very stiff to begin with. Also, a stiff seat is important to me personally because I have a stiff brake pedal, and as I'm pushing on that brake pedal, my lower back gets pushed into the bottom of the seat, the crease area where the bottom of the seat meets the back of the seat. And this needs to be as stiff as possible, for me anyway to be able to do long stints without getting out of the car and having lower back pain. Ergonomics is a very important thing and this seat lends itself well to that. Also, I use a pushing motion on the rim when I'm using the steering wheel and going through a turn like you see there, I'm actually pushing on it, which pushes my shoulder area back into the seat. And here again, it needs to be very stiff. If I'm in a seat that flexes, I notice it right away and it's just something that's not as pleasant as having a stiff seat. Now, as far as the fitment goes of this seat, it's not as tight as my Sparco Evo that is my everyday driver, at least for now. I noticed that. So if I wanted to use this seat on my rig all the time, there would be a compromise. Like so many things in life, you usually can't get everything perfect. So I would have to consider whether I want to use that or not. But you know, I do run a harness when I'm racing. And because of the surge and all that stuff that you know I use on my rig, the motion that I have, uh, side to side motion, if I'm strapped in tightly, I really don't think I'm gonna notice it that much because it's got a little bit of gap around it compared to my Sparco seat, but I'm gonna have to test it out on and before I make a final decision. But I have to say that the way this seat cools you, 
There's no cold spots here. If you saw the look inside, you know that 3D material they use allows that air to immediately flow the whole length of the cushion, the back and the bottom, so that you have the whole area being cooled. And I was not expecting that. I was expecting, you know, maybe around the, the fans it was cool, but you know, there's still gonna be some hot spots. But it doesn't feel like that when you're driving it. Also, you don't feel the fans. That was another concern when I first saw this design. How are you gonna keep fans from pushing into your back? especially the way I drive. <laughs> so I think, again, they did a good job in their R&D. They have these shrouds that are around the perimeter of the fan itself, which distributes the weight when you're pushing back or sitting in the seat, and you just don't feel the fans. Again, that was a surprise to me that they were able to pull that off. I'm sure they spent a lot of time, experimentation, again, R&D, before they came up with the solution. And it just works at the end of the day. If you've never had a cool seat while you're driving, it certainly is a pleasant experience. Now, I usually have fans blowing on the front of my body, but I was always getting sweaty on my back and the lower back and down where my butt was sitting in the seat. Anytime I got out of the car in a long stint, yeah, it was uh, pretty sweaty. And I think most people are like that, but now it doesn't happen anymore. So this is something that I was not expecting this. It just worked so well the way they pulled this off. And I wouldn't, you know, stiff as this seat is, I was thinking that, you know, if I had a Miata Mazda or a Honda S2000 still that I had before, I would not hesitate to put the seat in it for like a weekend track day car because it's that stiff. Now, track would, I don't know what they would allow me to do. It might have to be an FIA certified seat, but if it wasn't, then I would certainly wouldn't hesitate to run this because of the stiffness it has in it. So overall, a great experience here in this seat. There's just no way I can convey this to you guys through video. You have to sit in and experience it for yourself and then have to make up your mind whether or not you think that this is something you wouldn't buy. So anyway, I thought I would just share my driving experience with you guys and yeah, they really pulled it off here, I think. Final thoughts on the Cold Fusion Sim Racing seat from the guys at Eau Rouge. The seat arrived well packaged with no damage from the shipping process. The fit and finish of the seat material was good all around with no defects found. In use, I found the 5mm thick fiberglass shell to be every bit as stiff as my FIA certified Sparco seat. This results in the same firm support under driving conditions. I was expecting to be able to feel the fans in the seat cushions, but was pleasantly surprised that I did not. I believe this is the result of the large fan shroud that is attached to the fan's frame, causing the weight to be distributed over a large area. The cooling effect that this seat produces is immediately noticeable. Under testing, I found around a 5 to 6 degree difference between the cooled cushions and the surrounding non-cooled sections of the seat. I did not experience any cool spots in the seat cushions. This due to the way the 3D material used in the cushions is able to evenly distribute the air movement over the entirety of its area. Driving with the cold fusion seat is a very good experience. Where before I would have a sweating back and bottom after driving a 45 minute race, now I don't. This also helps mitigate the fatigue factor after completing long stints. I have to admit, I do feel fresher after a race is finished. Overall, this seat does exactly what the guys at Eau Rouge say it will do. At the time of this review, I priced the seat from the Eau Rouge website at around $845, which is an expensive way to keep your back and bottom cool. To be fair, I also priced a proper Sparco Evo racing seat at around the same money. Although the Sparco is FIA certified and can be used in a real circuit race car. Still, if you are building a serious sim racing simulator, this seat will be something you may want to consider. I am Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.